Hello and welcome to the Dallas Soccer Show. I'm Dustin Nation and this is the Lineup Prediction Show. And joining us from his man cave in North Dallas, it is uh, Jonathan Ross. Welcome to the show, Jonathan, as always. Hey, Dustin. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's uh, how's life? Oh, uh, man, life has been, uh, it's been, been kind of chaotic lately. So my, uh, you know, I've done... Admittedly, very little FC Dallas reading and keeping up this week. Uh, work has gotten in the way. My 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 beautiful last memories of FC Dallas were uh, turning off the television Saturday night and shaking my head and saying, "All right, well, maybe next time." That is a sour taste to have in your mouth for a long time. Yeah. So I've been I've been a a, a, a bad podcast listener. I haven't listened to you or any of the other podcasts yet this week, but hopefully tomorrow will be a relaxing day where I can uh, get some time to catch up. There you go. Yeah, you can listen to us all be mad about things. It's It'll be great. <laughs> it'll get you in the right mood for Saturday's night's game against Minnesota. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So Minnesota coming, comes into this game. They haven't lost a game, it looks like, since June 8th um, against Colorado. They, they're they on a streak in the Open Cup. They did lose, I guess, a friendly to Aston Villa, but that, we're not counting that. Um, but yeah... So Streaky Minnesota comes into FC Dallas. Uh, they're going to be full strength. We are almost at full strength with Reggie Cannon being the only questionable player this week with an illness. So that means that Edwin Jossie, Jesse has recovered from whatever injury he had. That means that Barrios is fit from his ankle and and um, Dom Baji is also fit from his calf or lower leg injury. And no other lingering side effects there. So, pretty much a full side to, to pick from this week. Jonathan, if you were facing Minnesota and you were Lucy Gonzalez, who would your back line be? Um, so, uh, nothing super creative at the back line. So, uh, Hollingshead, Ziegler, Hedges, um, and Brisson. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm, I'm going to... since. Reggie was sick enough to put him on the official injury report when I actually have uh, Brisson come in, especially since we have a midweek game. Um, I'd rather rest Reggie, have him ready for that midweek game, um, not take a chance with the with the illness. So nothing, nothing too crazy. What about uh, what about you, Dustin? So I also think that nothing too crazy will happen. I think it's too early for um, John Nelson to come back and make a start. I think we will see him this game. But I think that Hollingshead gets that left back start, Ziegler and Hedges in center back, and then I think, I think that the illness to Reggie was early enough in the week that he'll be recovered. I think, I I think he's a warrior. I think he'll be out there if he can be. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with Cannon at right back. So uh, we'll see how that goes. If not, it'll be Rasan. But uh, I'm I'm gonna go out there on the limb. Come on, Reggie, don't let me down. Fight for it. So. What about the midfield? This is where it kind of gets a little crazy because we've got, um, we had kind of a, a weird problem of creativity and moving the ball through through the throughout the field on in Orlando, and getting that ball into the, the final third and then making something happen. So part of that problem was with the way the midfield was playing and the kind of um, the strategy going on there. Personnel-wise, Jonathan, do you change anything from last week? Well, the the of course the obvious change would be that the cost is available again, so uh, mm-hmm. he's he's back. Uh, he, he's going to start. Um, I, I think that uh, Lucci's has pegged him as the number six. I expect that's probably where we're going to see him as to continue to play as the the you know maybe a single pivot or or our kind of chief defender in the middle. Taking that Grezzo spot, um, Paxton. I expect he's going to be um, our tennis, whatever, whatever, or you know, a, a, an attacking midfielder. I think the question then really comes um, on what you play for your other midfielder, and I think it's going to be in another attacking midfielder. So your choices, to me, are either going to be uh, Cervania. Or you come back with uh, with Jesus, right? To go back to the to the view we had when um, when Pax was out. Hmm. I'm I'm actually going to go with Jesus. I think that you know uh, 
which of course obviously means I don't think he's playing striker. Um, but uh, I, I, I like that look and 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 uh, you know the fact that we have really been stagnant. I agree over the last uh, not just the last game, the last few games, right? Uh, I, I think having a couple of more offensive-minded people in the midfield is going to be beneficial. So, uh, so that's 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 my three. Uh, what are you thinking? I'm. I mean, that's not a bad shout. That's seems pretty creative having Paxton and Jesus both out there in the midfield. I just don't think that Lucci will go that way. I think he's going to want to stick to his guns and and tweak the the tactics and not the the players. I think he's going to go with Cervania. Um, and Acosta and Pomacol as the midfield three. And I think that they're going to try... Armand had Lucci quoted as saying that he wanted to play a little bit more direct this week and try to um, go about attacking differently and try to get on the ball and in their zone before they even have a chance to set up and do whatever it is that or the you know the, the low block that everybody seems just to do and hunker down against FC Dallas. So... I think that rather than changing the personnel, I think he'll stick with Pomacol, Cervania, and then Acosta's obviously back this week. So that's that's my midfield three. So the the final third, it's been the the we'll call it the bane of FC Dallas fans' existence. Uh, we, <laughs> we 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 cried out for more and we got nothing. But what we have is uh, what we have. So. Do who do you have in your top three? I mean, I, yeah. It, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it is it is tough. I mean, with all the with all the new signings, you know, it's hard to know you know how many of them are gonna be fit to play. You know, um, coming off their international visas, um, he says, you know, sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think anybody. I don't think uh, uh, Jesse won any hearts or minds with his uh, his his start last week. Um, and, and Mikey's shortest uh, injury uh, he's ever had, probably, uh, as, as he had to, you know, quickly come back. You know, I think 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in. Uh, so, the, the the fact that I, I like the the information you were hearing from from uh, I think you said Armand had, had talked to Lucci. Uh, to me, if you're if if that's the the game plan, then well, obviously Mikey's there. Baji's more of that style of player. So if if, if, we're, if you're talking about um, you know the that uh, a you know straight attacking play right that's you know that's one of Bachi's biggest skill sets is he's 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 fast he's probably other than Mikey our fastest guy on the on the team um, and then Santi so the I'm gonna go with those three be interesting because I've got Jesus in the midfield right with so you've 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 got some uh, you know some other opportunities to mix some things up but um, that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, Baji, Santi, and Mikey. So the the three E's. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have opportunity to mix thing up things up. I'm not gonna mix things up though. I think that it's gonna be a pretty like we'll call it a boring, boring personnel wise for my pick. I, I think that it's gonna be boring. I think it's gonna be you know all the usual characters that we started that we've kind of seen. I don't think he's gonna change it up drastically. I don't. I, I agree with you about Jesse Edwin Edwin Jesse um, that I don't think that he'll he'll be returning. I mean, whether it was from his uh, injury or just from his performance, there were you know it wasn't terrible. It wasn't fantastic either, but it was also only like 20 minutes. So um, I don't. I think he comes on as a sub. But here's what's going to be interesting. Uh, I I'm gonna call it. I don't. I mean, I haven't. I have no basis for this, so uh, again, I could be way off. But I think Christian Coleman makes the bench this game. So that's my that's my yeah. crazy shout. Yeah, and I think I even mentioned that maybe even last week too. But the the only thing I don't know is um, he was listed to be available for NTSC last week, um, and he didn't make the bench. And the bench was short two players. Mm-hmm. So I haven't heard anything. I don't know if you've heard anything. I like. Like I said, I've been disconnected, unfortunately, this week, so I didn't get a chance to read the practice reports or anything to know uh, if if uh, Christian was was practicing full speed this week. But uh, have you have you heard anything? I haven't heard anything. I assume that everything's 
What what I think might have happened is that he was figuring to be in the 18, but then the last minute it was uh, somebody else got the nod instead of him, which is would be why he didn't travel. Yeah, uh, I, I think this week he does get the nod. Yeah, for that 18, we'll see. Yeah, actually, I think he was even in the travel. Fi- I think he even traveled, Christian. I think did, I remember seeing he? him in in the NTSC travel pictures. So. Oh, and he yeah, didn't make so the it, bench there. It was, yeah, it was really interesting. So that's why. Yeah, I saw that and I was worried. I was like, oh man, I hope he didn't pick up a knock or something like that. That would be very uh uh misfortunate but man i would i mean whether he gets in or gets in or not it would be kind of nice to to see um christian make the make the 18 again so be a good story for him it would be um yeah so i don't think i actually came out and said it but i do think mascara and baji and mikey barrios barrios speedwagon as i yeah. coined on, on this week's episode but apparently it did not catch on we're we're yet to be having that trend on Twitter, so uh, if, if you if if you like it, get on it. Hashtag Barrio Speedwagon. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> All right. FC Dallas plays Minnesota uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, at was it six thirty, I believe, or it's no, it's, sorry, it's, it's, it's at seven. You know, we can't do an eight at, o'clock game, can we? Yeah. No. At no, seven. <laughs> at seven p.m. in in Frisco. Should be hot. Should be a good game. Let's just do this. We're going to change it up here real quick before we uh, call it quits for this episode. Jonathan, do you have a score prediction? Do I have a score prediction? Oh man, uh, I'm going to try to be I'm going to try to be optimistic, and I'm going to go with uh, uh, us getting our third win in eight games. It would be. Uh, and, a, and we're going to get a, a, a two, one win. So it's what we're, uh, the Minnesota scores on us, but we, we manage, you know, with our, with our new formation and, you know, some great play, you know, in the middle by, uh, Jesus and Paxton, uh, and our, new but, uh, D- our new DPs our, our, our new DPs. Yeah. No, I do. I, I, I do think that this is a winnable game, but honestly, I thought Orlando was a winnable game. So, uh, we'll, we'll see how they play. What about, uh, and, and honestly, a lot of it depends on how, how much, uh, if Minnesota is going to rotate any players too. So, um, because they've got, I think they had a game Wednesday and they got a midweek game as well. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're at a hundred degree Frisco, um, starting at seven o'clock. They might want to make some changes as, as well. I'm not counting on that, but yeah, we uh, thought the same thing about Orlando, but boy, were we wrong. Yep. Um, so I would say that it's either going to be a one nil Minnesota win or a 2-1 FC Dallas win, like you said. The fan in me, the ever-optimist, wants to say 2-1 FC Dallas win. Um, I think I'm going to go with that because here's why. I think I think the players and the staff were embarrassed by last week. I think that it was not... I mean, we saw several quotes come out that, like, this is not how we want to play. We're like, this, we're st-. Lucci came out in the press conference and said, I'm sorry to the fans. So, um, I think that everyone's going to have a little bit more of a fire under them this week. And uh, they'll, they'll want to play well at home. The home points are, are precious and you need them. If you, if you don't get them, you're probably not going to the playoffs. I think FC Dallas pulls out this win and, uh, keeps the season alive barely so all right we'll see now, what happens obviously obviously i agree yes so uh but just remember i said it first all right I, i'm i'm gonna agree <laughs> with you <laughs> jonathan i agree with jonathan Roz. all righty <laughs> you can find us on the internet our website is dallas you can find us on twitter dallas soccer show with no e uh and jonathan you can find jonathan on twitter as at jonathan Roz 12 is that, am I getting it right this week? That's right. Yep. Boom. That's two in a row. That's a streak. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>